Hello and good evening and welcome to the Comics Experience Graphic Novel of the Month Club. It's our last club for 2020 and I could not be more excited about the book that we have this month. Um, you know, it, this is the the first uh, 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 original work from uh, from a new creator. Uh, it's not his first work ever, but it's it's his first work that he wrote and draw, which which is is always to me kind of the most exciting book to talk about. Uh, you know, the the how did you get here uh, a, a book, and I couldn't be more thrilled to to talk to you about Odessa. Uh, and our we have. Uh, our, our guest right now, we have Jonathan Hill right here uh, to talk to us about Odessa. Hello, Jonathan. How are you? I'm doing great. Hi, Brian. I'm really excited to be here and chat with you about comics. Yeah. Yeah. Comics. Fuck yeah. So you didn't get into comics until college. That's that's interesting. That's not an answer we hear very often. Uh, uh, did you did you not encounter comics very often? I did. When I say I didn't get into comics, I don't think really see. I think that like a lot of people that maybe get into comics, get into comics because they've been into comics their whole life, right? Um, kind of the way I feel about comics now. But of course, you know, when I was a kid, I remember reading, you know, The Far Side and Calvin and Hobbes. Those, that was sort of my intro into comics, you know, and this was when, I mean, it dates me, but, you know, you could pick up a, a Spider-Man or an issue of the X-Men in the grocery store um, on the magazine aisle. And so, you know, I would, we would pick them up every once in a while, you know, is that or a candy bar or something. And, but I never really seriously thought about comics. Um, I think when it came time to go to college, um, I draw, I've drawn my whole life, but when it came time to go to college, um, I had, I had no concept of how you turn that into a career, like what you would do. Right. Um, and so when I was in school and I had to pick a major, um, I picked illustration because I was like, I like to draw, you get to draw there. Um, and I was about two years into the illustration program and I was bored out of my mind. I hated it. It just wasn't giving me, I mean, I, I was drawing like I thought I would do, but it wasn't, it wasn't sort of, I don't know, giving me a lot of enjoyment. Um, it wasn't inspiring me. Um, and a friend of mine, um, my, my neighbor, he was my neighbor in the dorms the freshman year and we'd just become friends and he was already making comics. He was majoring in comics. I went to SCAD, which back then was one of the like two places you could actually get a degree in comics. And he was like, man, you love writing. You love telling stories. You love drawing. Like maybe you should give this comics thing a try. And I was like, that sounds like a really bad idea, but um, I'm not happy. So I'll, I'll give it a shot. And I think um, I just remember in my intro class, just, it, just feeling like it clicked. Yeah. Did you have any particular themes or areas that you were were focusing on when you're doing your zines, or was it just kind of anything that popped into your head? I mean, there there's a real mix of stuff. I mean, what I had is I had these I had these characters who were all named John. Um, it was there was like a punk rocker, a cowboy, a little like kappa turtle, okay. and then this weird like creature, and they were all named John. And I think what I did, and I think what you still see in the work that I have now, and I think I actually have. I think you can look at those on my, on my website. I'm not, they're really old comics, but like a theme that came up for me is like, I wanted to, I, w I love telling jokes, but I also, I, so I, I guess if I had to sum it up, my early comics would basically be like something heartfelt that was told in as, as stupid of a way as possible. You know what I mean? I, um, like I just want to, you know, like I, I like to think that I still, all of those, all of those old comics, even if they were just a gag, they still had, I, they still had like heart to them or there, there was something at that core. That's, that's what, that's what I was going for. I, again, I feel like I can't say if that worked or not, you oh, know sure, what I mean? Yeah. But that's what that's I was, that's that's what I was going for. Um, uh, like I, because you're, 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 are you, um, photocopying them or are you getting them like offset print? Oh, we, oh, we did not get them offset print. That was okay. way above. That was not that, not that we weren't aware of those printing things, but it's sure. just like, I mean, we were so. I remember getting, we, we bought, like my roommates and I went in and bought a laser jet printer. This was when they were like five or $600. You could yeah. get one for like a hundred dollars and the toner was too expensive. So what we did is we would buy the toner in bulk, not the toner for the thing, but the actual toner itself. And yeah. we would like heat up this like buck knife, <laughs> heat it. So it was red hot and we'd yeah. cut a, we carve a hole cut it out and then we'd refill the toner and then we'd tape over it and print and we'd print them at home. And then we'd maybe get the cover, the color covers printed or we'd screen print them. 
or yeah. you know do something like that or print yeah get them printed at like kinko's or something that was back in the day when you would you know you knew a buddy that worked at kinko's and i was working at powell's and so i'd be like hey if you can get us these prints i'll give you my discount at the yeah. time or something you know what i mean like it was you know again it's a community i think it's a community yeah. thing yeah in addition to doing shows you're you're selling them at local stores are you selling them at powell's and yeah and read, reading Powell? frenzy um yeah. Yeah, yeah. you daily um yeah. that was again that was probably one of my favorite i mean again talk about embarrassment of riches in the early aughts you had powell's down the block from there you had reading frenzy and um sure. counterculture what oh, was it counterculture no it was what was it um Ah, I can't remember. It had culture in the name and counter. It might not, but it was just like, man, that block alone yeah. was just like, I mean, that was, I did, that's all I did my show. So I, I'd go to comic shops around town and sell them, yeah. but then, you know, but again, you're, you know, I mean, like it's such a joke because it costs you $5 to print it. Then you co sign. Right. And then by the time you get a check, you've sold, you know what I mean? Maybe you've sold five and you've got a dollar 50 to buy a copy right, or something. Right, right, but again, right. that's not the, you're doing it because sure. like, because you because you love making comics and you you hope that it'll eventually lead to something and that yeah. wasn't my plan was to like work at a grocery store and make mini comics for my whole yeah. life but part of me was also like i don't know you know yeah. maybe that well, I, mean, singing, I mean obviously people's timers were something but i always thought there was a way to do mini comics if you've got especially if you own a printer uh to do them for you know 15 20 cents a copy and then you're selling them for three or four dollars right and yeah, yeah, and there's, I mean, but the the margin. You're making, you're not making a living of any kind, right? No, but you're, no. but you're, you're. The the choice of of pink is a color. Talk yeah. About that for yeah, of course. You know, I mean, I think uh, so. There's there's two there's two sort of reasons for this for just the single tone. First is I think there's a there's a practical reason, um, in terms of just like. I, I'm not great at color. I'm actually colorblind. Not that I can't color. I color my illustrations and stuff. And digital helps with that too, because I yeah. can see, you know, the the colors. But um, I just wanted like this book I had been sitting on since like 2012. I wanted to get it done, so I didn't want to color it. Um, but then there's also another artistic choice in terms of like, I think one of my things I love about comics is how it exists in sort of the in between space. There's visuals. Um, but there's no sound. So the, the reader has to kind of, kind of merge those of what they're reading and kind of put it in their head. You know, there's the gutter, literally that's the space in between where someone's deciding what an action looks like in their head, you know? Um, yeah. and so I think a single tone is also like that and that it l allows a cartoonist to, um, imply form and shadow and atmosphere, but it, it exists in the in-between space. So you're giving them just enough information and then they they can kind of the reader can take take the rest of it away, um, and so it's it's just one of those I, things. I, not or go ahead. Thing I had uh, I had considered it all. That's very interesting. Uh, uh, is the fact that you're colorblind? Does that did it make that pop to you more? Did it? Yeah, I I mean I I don't think I've ever thought consciously of that, but I think that as you work, like I mean, as you work, you find things that you do well and you lean into those and then not that we we're not always trying to get better but also you try to lean into them in a way that covers up maybe things that you don't do well and right. so i think that that connection i'd never made but it kind of seems obvious right um and that again it works it works i i, I don't know it makes me think of like i love watching like sort of uh like movies or documentaries about how they're made because i love i love when there's like a problem like they, they have a time crunch, there's a problem, it needs solving. And then they come up with some, you know, this is kind of not with movies with CG now, but they're just like, we have this production problem, we have to fix it, how do we do it? And it kind of forces them to be really creative and really like solve that problem in a really interesting way. And I sort of, I, lo I love that sort of intersection of sort of like need and creativity. Um, and I love when learning how, how people solve that. And so I think this might just be a way that I learned to solve that, yes. you know? Yeah, um, no, I love it. I, I love that. that that's but great. I, I also did not answer pink. I got into yeah. sort of the theory about yeah, why no, no, you use no, the single tone. I really, I really enjoyed the theory part of it. So okay. but, I, um, I but, appreciate that and yeah. I thank you for that. So there is, so pink, one, again, a practical reason is it's a nice mid-tone. When you're yeah. doing a single tone comic, you don't want to pick something too dark that it's yeah. going to take away the line work. So tonally, that pink is right there. But also like I think in post-apocalyptic stories, it, especially, and I'm thinking of, 
you know, some, some comics or video games or movies, it's gray and brown and drab. And it, and there's, the, there's also a lot of emphasis on like sort of hyper masculinity and stuff like yeah. that. And I think what I wanted is because I think that's also a theme in, in the book is sort of this, like the world that's hard that the, the grownups have given that. And then like kindness and caring sort of pushing up against that. And so I thought the pink worked tonally, but then also I thought that like, oh, it's like the opposite of what you normally see in a like post-apocalyptic story, you know? Yeah, sure. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No. And it, I mean, it, and it makes you, it makes you feel like there's something foreign or radioactive or something mm. still, right? It, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because it's not a, it's not a natural color that you see a lot. Yeah. You know? So yeah. 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 